Wilkes from Aggregate Industries. Um, so in Brussels, um, the current legislation is such that um, if you want to build a new building or do a refurb, it has to be done to uh, the PHPP, Passive House uh, Standard. So the question really is, how can they get away with introducing and, 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 uh, and also persuading people that this is the way to go? Whereas over in the UK, we, we've just got rid of the zero carbon initiative. We've got rid of the... Uh, um, uh, the, you know, all the other legislation associated with low carbon homes and uh, we're down now to part L of building regs which is not particularly great anyway. Um, I, I'm just interested on that and, and the second point really if I may, just an observation um, I work for a manufacturer and part of our business we actually build high performance shells for clients and they usually custom build houses for people with a, with a piece of land so they'll come to us and they'll say to us, and these people aren't building professionals, they're just Joe Public. And they'll say to us, I want this house to be a U value of X. I want it airtight, fairly airtight. They'll even talk to us about things like lineal thermal bridging. And, and they've got this information from the internet, they might have got it from Kevin McLeod off Grand Designs or whatever, but they educate themselves about what they want in their new houses. So really, it's an observation, but the question is, how do you get this across to the general public and get them interested in, in asking the same sorts of questions when they're buying new houses? They might not be commissioning them themselves or getting them built for themselves, but they, they go to a developer and ask these questions. Yeah, so the answer to that is, uh, when Lib Dems had deck, we fought every single day on these mind. issues. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I was in 10 Downing Street a number of times saying, you know, these are important issues. The trouble is, is the political mentality that's coming out of the Treasury, George Osborne, is let's get rid of all this. This is just taxation. Um, they don't actually believe the arguments and actually they haven't taken the time to realise that there's a problem. I think what's going to drive things is the change in the electricity prices and gas prices. And I think that is when it comes back. But then you have the big question that you've actually asked. Should we be changing people, the way people build, through regulation or through um, the push from consumers? And I think actually the second is much more likely to be effective because you can always get around regulations. You know, how many, how many people, if they went into a building and realised it's just been constructed and actually went and looked at it, how often do you find that some of the major stuff has just been skimped on? And nobody's done the check, so that's why it happens. I'm not saying obviously anybody in this audience, this organisation, would ever do anything of the sort, but I, I do think that there's going to be a push from companies, from individuals for higher standards, um, although I would have liked to see regulation a lot tougher. I don't think you're going to get that for the next three, four years. Just to add one point there, so I mean the crazy situation we've got at the moment is that if developers got their foundations in the ground soon enough, before the latest cha change to Part L, they can actually now build new houses to the old Part L regulation. Now, you wouldn't go into a, a BMW showroom and say, well, I'll have a 2010 model and I'll pay the same price. Yet people think they're, they're buying a new house and it's actually built to a really old standard. Uh, well, it was the point which was made earlier, which is, you know, at the moment it's a sort of, um, it's a seller's market. And, you know, you build a rubbish building and people say, well, I'm so desperate to buy, I'll buy it. Um, I think that's wrong, but we're going to have that problem. That's where regulation should have given minimum standards. Uh, I'm, very, um, I'm not very positive, though, about, you know, exactly what will come out of this government on that. Thank you. Any other questions? I was going to... Sorry, I'll say a few sorry, bits on that. <laughs> Just, just on the, the passive house piece, I think that's. Uh, I think there's loads that we can learn from passive house. And in my previous uh, life, I used to work in DCLG, and I know that DCLG did look an awful lot at passive house and the things like the the fabric energy efficiency that has been brought into Part L has very much come from that approach. Okay, it's not going all the way along, but we are. It's, it's miniature steps, I think, is very much the, the kind of the key thing there. In terms of home quality, Mark, we'll, we'll actually 
B, uh, accepting uh, passive house as a, a deemed to approve route for certain sections of home quality marks, so things like the energy and some of the air quality and some of the knowledge sharing side of things as well, because I think the, 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 um, the quality and the performance gap side of passive house is, is really important. Uh, in terms of the other question, in terms of people's knowledge, I think that's, that's very much what we're talking about. It's, it's different levels. So getting people into uh, understanding some of the good outcomes in terms of low energy and good air quality and everything else. And actually, if you want to drill down into that more detailed information, you should be able to do that. And I think that's really important. I've got a friend who's building a, a doing a self-build at the moment, and he's literally taught himself passive house and very similar. And, and that should be available to people to actually be able to understand what's going on in their building. And that's what we try and want to try and achieve with this. Okay, we'll have a question for the uh, Paul Jennings from Aldus. I'm an air tightness tester. I mostly work in Passive House. Um, it's really to Gwyn. I'm afraid I'm very cynical. If the developers like your scheme, I won't. You know, volume house builders build down to a price, not up to a standard. And they'll carry on building what we let them get away with. And without investment in building control, in better standards, I'm afraid we're going to see more of the same old rubbish. You know, we actually see refurbishing Victorian houses is a better bet than taking something that was built in the 70s, 80s. 70s, 80s stuff, we'll knock it down. We'll reuse the concrete slab. Um, and that's before we get into major refurbishment. You know, the major refurbishment schemes, the three biggest passive house refurbs, three of them, I've worked on all of them, every one of them has been compromised at the beginning by bad surveys, by surveyors not even measuring the building right. You know, the quality out there, you know, we've got a real problem. I've, you know, I've been doing this a long time, and I've said to builders, I said to builders, carry on doing what you're doing, and in 10 years you'll have to learn German, because the German industry will have finished fixing Germany, and they'll come over here. I think there's a lot of truth in that. Uh, was, that was that a question? <laughs> yeah, I think it was a question <laughs> of the statement, really. Uh, the only thing I would say is about some of the larger develop developers, I don't think you can paint them all with one brush, and there are differences, and there are also differences within companies as well. So you can look at some of the national house builders, and there are sites which are appalling, and I've seen them. But from the same house builder, 20 miles down the road, you can actually see something which is actually of decent quality. So I think there's always that, yeah, there's a lot of bad cases out there. There's too many, and... Uh, I think it was Lord Rooker uh, about a year ago who was saying that actually, unfortunately, those are quite often the companies that are making the most profit as well. And we need to be able to find ways of decoupling, decoupling that, the, the ones that make the most profit are often building the ones that are the most low quality out there. But I think we need to be careful because if we paint everyone on the same brush and uh, talk down things too much, then actually that's all work we achieve. And we really need to be very careful with that. Which is fair comment, but it does point to building control is not doing its job. Yeah. Okay. I think we'll get to a closing. Can we give another round of applause to our first?